Hey guys, I put it up to a poll on Twitter, and this week we're doing a let's try of Burroughs. Which one's your favorite? Shotgun question, go. Toaster's here, by the way. Uh, probably, I don't know, The may, maybe the, the weasel looking thing? The opossum? Uh, maybe the, the guy with the gun? Really? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> what did I do wrong? Hi, I'm Toaster. I'm here too. Yeah, no, I just I just inherently wanted to sound judgmental no matter what you said. Like it's oh, no. fucking like it's uh <laughs> like you just had to blind say which echo character you like and like, oh i'm gonna judge you now as if you knew what they were <laughs> well to be honest i like wasn't really looking at the screen when you asked so i was like i had to look over and make a snap judgment and then i also uh, had to figure out what species they all were yeah. immediately which yeah. i mean i i think it's like a like a maybe an otter on the left and then a fennec oh, fox that's, that's a hard call yeah and then a, a possum or something and then a, a lizard of some kind? shark yeah I can't, I can't tell and then if that might be a dog um this, so yeah this, probably a, a german a shepherd wolf. with glasses yeah maybe like a maned wolf or, or something like that maybe a german shepherd i don't know and then like a panther <laughs> but i like i i may, that might be a bear i don't know i've i'm not I'm not good that's at probably this. A, that's probably a panther yeah. this one the the, I, the the masked character that is also off camera is a hard guess <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I didn't even realize he was masked. I just thought that was his. Yeah, I that was he's his got a little masquerade mask. Look at ah. the shimmer and the ripple at the edge. Yeah, that's that's a hard gotcha. call. Gotcha. I don't know well, anything I like about this artist Burroughs. A lot. Yeah, Captain Nico. <laughs> I know. I read Captain Nico's uh, Bodega Cat comic. Yeah. But I I've read a lot of. A lot don't of know his anything work. about this visual novel at all. Yeah. Same. That's a sound. Okay, immediately it's what? Nice, it's got a nice UI. Oh. Timeline. Gray was born. It's Fallout 3. The story starts with the birth of the main character. <laughs> it's actually a lot of time before they're born. What happened in 1860? This is a wide a wide timeline. 1860 to 1990. This is already very intriguing. I'm very <laughs> interested in this. The game begins with the protagonist's birth and it ends with my birth. <laughs> <laughs> How did they know? I didn't know I was in this so, game. Maybe it looks we... like we have like a whole lot of like Ooh. interactive sections, right? Like there's these fragments. This might be CGs of some kind or maybe notes. Work in progress. Archives, Archives do timeline. Yet. I wonder how notes. long this, this is going to be when it's finished. I have no idea. Mud. Mud all over my Italian leather so I'm sorry. <laughs> Starting strong. <laughs> it's just, I can't, how do I not think of that every time? <laughs> Mud all over my Italian leather loafers. The last real gift anyone gave me is now caked in a mixture of dirt, manure, and hay. Huh. I guess that's the sign I was waiting for, then. I've been prepared for it. That nagging feeling, always buzzing in the back of my head, even at the best of times. Why would tonight be any different? I hold my shoes in my free hand in a futile attempt at preventing any further damage. Glad I wasn't outside during whatever caused this mess. My gratitude is quickly dashed by the sound of thundering in the distance. Maybe it's a good night for this after all. Less people will be around. The mud, the wet mud squelches under my paws as I make my way through the unpaved streets of the of the ninth ward. Somehow it feels weird to say paws in the context of having shoes on. Never mind. <laughs> now barefoot, I, I take care not to. St right, he did say he was holding his shoes in his hands. I'm very smart. I take care not to step on any of the broken bottles littering the street, courtesy of the locals. Maybe I should put the shoes back on. <laughs> I guess I'd be considered a local by most now. Although, I never really fit the bill, did I? 
Another twinge of indestructible. Another twinge of indescribable dread reminds me that this needs to be finished as soon as possible. Hello. The sky growls as if it's warning me not to continue, but I press on. It'll take more than that to stop me at this point. This, uh, possum, I mean, looks like an Italian mobster. He's he immediately got <laughs> he's a got, He's got like a shirt. certain look to him, you know? Even with the, even with the, uh, you know, the clothing and stuff, he's just, it's his posture and everything. You can tell this game is already dripping in atmosphere and setting. I like this. I was already thinking about Lackadaisy because it's the same, I think it's the same era. But, yeah. So I immediately just latched onto the specific pin of the clover, like how they have the, yeah. uh, what plant? Oh, what is that? Uh, I don't remember what the flower is in that one, but the uh, <laughs> we got we got like 0.5 seconds of view of this character's sprite before he was immediately with a transparent wet shirt. It was a target that demo. is a, a staple of this artist. <laughs> <laughs> it starts raining, hard. Adults quickly duck inside while children scream and play in the newly formed puddles. Well, I'll give God one thing. He has a serious knack for comedic timing. A brave few shrug off the abrupt storm and continue drinking under the safety of their porch overhangs, waving their bottles at me as if to make a toast. I awkwardly mimic the motion in return, water spilling out of my shoes like an overfilled glass. They give me a strange glance, but shrug it off, the whiskey tea likely overriding their common sense. wonder who that is. I think it's just him talking to himself. Maybe. Or they could be good people, Gray. When was it that I became so cynical again? Well, this constant onslaught of lukewarm rain isn't exactly helping. I chuckle to myself. When God decides to take a piss where you're standing, there's not much to be done about it. Something my grandmother used to say, but in that raspy Irish broke that added warmth to even the oddest idioms. I... So he's an Irish mobster. Should have visited more often. Yeah. I don't think I can do Irish. <laughs> No. <laughs> that thought Sorry. fizzles out before I can let myself hold on to her memory too long. A defense I'd likely cooked up to avoid adding more guilt on top of the burgeoning pile. Just, there's just screaming in the background now. <laughs> yeah. It, just, it creates an interesting atmosphere, right? Like, I already feel like I have a sense of place. Yeah. It, uh, so much for his, like, less people around, though. Yeah. I instead, instead, I turn my focus on the unpleasant smell currently invading my senses. The sections of New Orleans without paved roads seemed perpetually waterlogged, leaving a distinct sulfurous odor on anything or anyone that walked through them. I somehow knew this was in New Orleans, and I don't know how. Was it just obvious? I was immediately guessing that it took place in New Jersey, so don't ask me. Yeah, I literally immediately was like, this is in New Orleans. And then it's, it's confirmed, but I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I had the feeling that like, yeah, this this from this takes this place takes place in Gambit's home. Or Gambit grew up. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty dangerous to walk on them right after a rainstorm. Tiny air pockets can create sinkholes that'll catch you off guard if you step too hard on them. A little girl runs by in the mud-stained dress, laughing playfully as her mother closes in with a towel stretched out like a fishing net. I'm reminded of all the times me and the old gang would sneak into the city to play with our secret friends there, not caring if our new clothes got dirty in the mud. The annoyance of my ruined shoes melts away as those old memories overtake me. We'd wait for a carriage to cross by in the hayfield and jump onto the back, picking up other kids along the way. Sam would usually miss the jump and plod behind, out of breath and 
useless by the time we got into town. Me, I don't... Mm, Etienne? Etienne? Yeah, Etienne. Yeah. Me, Etienne, and Charles would play soldiers while Sam, Jules, and Simone would stay behind and make us mud pie rations. Uh, <laughs> I hope nobody ever actually ate those. Actually, I think Et might have tried to stick Sam into... To try to trick Sam into... Damn it. I want to try to stop him. No, no. Good memories. One time, Eddie and I, and I climbed up to the rooftops to pretend to fence with sticks until the sun went down. What's going did on the journal here? just update? Yeah, it did. With oh, a lot. Oh, cool. <laughs> Everyone's dates of birth. We have an age gap of five. This is a really cool gimmick. Very few visual novels like have good timeline or like archive uh, systems in them. So especially yeah. when they deal with like timelines and stuff like this, I'm not even talking about like time travel, but just like, you know, long periods of lore. It's always nice to have something where it like gives you a breakdown of when things take place. Right click, there we go. <laughs> it's not, not immediately clear to me how to leave that menu. The, uh, <laughs> no, the, the, no, the, the number, like there are reveals like in Echo where it would be really handy to know what people's ages were. <laughs> because yeah. there's moments where you're like, okay, we're rewinding back to this time and we're supposed to have an opinion about this scenario, but uh, I, I have a lot of math to do and a lot of guesswork about how old I think everyone is now versus then and what that means. If Jules hadn't pulled me down, I doubt I would have remembered to go home. Simone always looked so glum when we had to leave. Never let us walk her home. That was the same way. Deep down, they must have known we came from money. I'm suddenly reminded of the beatings that would usually follow these outings. Jules would try to take the blame, being the oldest. But the adults never bought it. We'd all go to bed hungry and with sore bottoms, pretending to feel bad but stifling laughter under our sheets, perfectly pleased with ourselves. It was hard not to laugh when the governess pretended to scold us in front of our parents, making goofy faces at us all the while. A crash to my who left. Aren't, for people who aren't aware, a governess is like a, ho a housekeeper. They're not like actually a governor. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're just someone yeah. who, who takes care of your property and, you know, kind of like a a like a like nanny, I guess, is, yeah. is what uh, some people would call it. Person who does the real parenting in some of these families. Yes. A crash to my left breaks me out of my reminiscing. Some cat's been flung ass over tea kettle down the steps of a pub by the gruff, by the gruff looking bouncer. I was ready for like, for, for like a sentence like by the scruff of his neck, so I was completely on the wrong page. <laughs> Any pains hardy, uh, hardly reflected by his dazed expression, and I can smell the reek of liquor on his breath as he locks eyes with me. I pass by and he grazes me with that toothy jack-o'-lantern grin that's so distinctive of felines. Not to be deterred, he scampers off to find another haunt. His determination is almost admirable. I wonder if I looked that gone when I used to. You know what? Fuck it. This whole thing would have been so much easier with a few drinks in my system. Maybe that cat's got the right idea after all. I glance back at the pub. Despite the government's best efforts, prohibition in New Orleans never really stuck. People either brought their own from home, or the owners kept it hidden away from in their cellars. I looked through the window to see the patrons inside singing joyfully off-key, playing cards, laughing. Even the bartender was getting in on the fun. Hmm. No, it looks too rowdy. I'm looking for a soft, quiet descent into the unfeeling before it's time to go. That's interesting. Time to go is still ambiguous, technically, but when we talked about having nobody around, like, as witnesses, I, I kind of thought he was committing, that he was uh, contemplating suicide. Oh, I was thinking he was going to kill someone. I thought he was going to hit someone. You think he wants to get plastered before he shoots someone? Yeah. I feel like that could go very bad. 
Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, the, the vibe that I get from this guy is that he is a, a guy that does dirty work and that was like pulled into this work and doesn't necessarily want to be. So he's struggling with it. Mm. And that's what makes him likable for us. Uh, if he is, in fact, a mobster. Uh, but the I idea, guess a lot of that is assumptions. The idea that Barry almost makes fun of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't this guy sympathetic? No, not no, not really. <laughs> I need to finish the like season three or whatever. I walk. Season I walk three and four are very very good. Oh god, I'm so far behind. There's so much TV. How does anyone have time to draw? Yeah. They don't. Nobody draws. <laughs> they draw while they watch TV. <laughs> That's not good. I can't multitask drawing and watching stuff. Then I'll just won't absorb it. <laughs> Everyone who does that and thinks that they're absorbing the thing are, isn't <laughs> actually. They're missing a ton, and that's why they then they need me to come by, by with a video essay and explain to me the things they'd missed because they were drawing <laughs> instead of watching the thing. <laughs> I walk alongside the river out of habit and end up in the French Quarter, walking towards the welcoming lights that dot every window and veranda. I'll bet Simone's playing a sold-out show right now. Everyone's probably there. Can't imagine a worse place to be. Any possible seeds of doubt must be extinguished. Even in the heavy rain, the playfulness and color of Bourbon Street isn't dampened in the slightest. A band playing soft jazz finishes their set as I pass by. As I pass by a bustling nightclub. Applause punctuated by the clink of glasses and murmurs of approval. I scan the area, looking for something more quiet. Intimate. The rain picks up again and I wipe a few droplets off my brow with my other hand, forgetting the bouquet I'd been holding this entire time. A thorn pricks me a little and I recoil instinctively, cursing under my breath at this stupid thing. Why did she think this would somehow change my mind? I glance at the letter hanging from the ribbon holding the bundle together, unopened and practically turned to pulp. Even in its mangled state, I could still make out her signature. Forever yours, Christine. What is happening? Hmm. Am I crazy or was that the was first this... mention of the bouquet? That was the first mention of the bouquet. Was is this is anything hinted at in the actual book? I know there was stuff on the right side. It looked like he was holding an envelope. Is that the same asset in his journal? Uh, this thing, the fragments thing. Oh, gotcha. It doesn't have anything written. I thought maybe this would be the letter or like, no, you know. Seems to be a picture of him. There's nothing in here yet. Whatever fragments mean. Hmm. Yeah, that was a moment of paranoia where I'm like, did I just miss this entirely or has he never mentioned this yet? <laughs> no, yeah, he, had, he hadn't mentioned the book yet, I don't think. What the hell am I doing holding on to this? Suddenly I notice a red light in the distance, setting itself apart from the sea of orange gaslit lanterns. I feel drawn to it like a moth to a flame. The red is bright, but gentle, leaning more towards the pink of a sweet hibiscus bloom than a tawny blaze of real fire. Upon closer inspection, I see that it's actually a neon sign. It flickers out of existence each time a droplet hits a tube with a sizzle, slowly fading back into its brilliant hue. The light glows gently through the steam pouring out of the sewers below, practically covering the entire storefront. It looks... ominous, to say the least. The small, dimly lit space surrounded by inky black on every side doesn't feel like it belongs here. Almost as if the building had been randomly placed here, not caring if it fits into the space organically. But I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned with danger right now. I make a beeline for it, spotting a trash can on the corner. I unceremoniously dump the bouquet and queue up in front of the strange establishment. The sign's in full view now, a simple rendition of a wine glass and the word bar underneath. Uncreative, but honest. Rather bold, too. Even if the law's loose around here, surely some inspector or an out-of-towner would be outraged at such a 
blatant disregard. It's actually a law office. <laughs> <laughs> so at the very least, I know that they'll have hooch. No time for the, uh, no need for the pin. Though I, I keep it for personal reasons nowadays. Most importantly, I don't hear the cacophony typical of a fully occupied club. Gosh, not even music? This is perfect. Oh, I walk God. up to the doorway. I, <laughs> what is going it? Going into a bar that has no background music is truly, if you've never been to a bar that doesn't play music, you want music immediately. That is a terrifying experience because all you get is like the, the background noise of people mumbling and like drinks being poured. And you realize like how weird it is to be in a very tightly enclosed space with way too many other people. <laughs> That's strange. That's a weird vibe. I don't know if I would go in there if there was no music playing. I, I, it's funny because the music's often like a, a, a problem for me. Where I'm just like, there's just this loud ass music playing. I'm like, cool. Didn't want to be yeah. able to hear anyone anyway. It's fine. I'm just talking about having some sort of background tra track to cover yeah. up the sound of like sneakers squeaking on the cement floor <laughs> of the bar and stuff like trust me when i say going into a bar like a like a dive bar like this that doesn't have music playing is a very weird awkward experience because you can feel like every you feel like everyone can hear you you don't like so, your, you don't like your bar experience to be basketball chic no no not at all <laughs> <laughs> that's sketch but again i Sketchers, guess maybe he knows how to handle even. himself <laughs> I walk up to the doorway, using what little covers available to get some relief from this rain. I find none. Relief from the rain when you just describe it as God pissing. Uh, I flatten against the door as best <laughs> as I can, trying to wring some of the excess water out of my shirt. Oh well, I guess it won't matter. And besides, whoever owns this joint can't expect a dry customer with weather like this. With how quiet it sounds in there, they should be happy anyone's patronizing them. I can't... I can't handle this word in this intent because of its other use that doesn't... isn't pronounced any differently. Oh. <laughs> you should be ha you should be happy I'm patronizing you. It's like, what? No. I don't want anyone to patronize me. The you struggle every time I talk... you. Yeah, every time I talk about the Patreon, I'm like, I need to figure out better words because I hate... The obvious ones that are that it says no 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 no. <laughs> With the final flick of the wrist, I turn the handle and head inside. A tiny bell chiming to signal my entry. The inside is wildly different than I expected from its humble exterior, looking more like a high roller's lounge than a speakeasy. There are tables for billiards, and poker in the back, and cigarette dispensers lining the walls. I even see some back rooms, likely for more private affairs. This place couldn't have been open for long, or Et would have dragged me here already. It's got every illegality us heathens could desire, all in one place. Only thing missing seemed to be the bartender. Could this place be closed for the night? Doesn't this place kind of immediately have like that uh that otherworldly vibe of like your protagonist yeah. just wandered into like a interdimensional like non space and that's why no one else is yeah, here and you've never very, heard of it it's before? It's very much that like liminal velvet room, black lodge style space. Yeah. Uh, I mean bars in, in you know, literature and in media have always been liminal spaces where, you know, a character gets to uh, talk with some with some mysterious stranger that changes their life or the recontextualizes events. Exactly, uh, with Mr. Grady and uh, everything. But like this is, th th I definitely think this this hazy vibe <laughs> definitely yeah. adds to that feeling as well. The part where it's it's proudly just labeled bar, despite the illegality. The the way that it's described is almost having a, like a void around it, like it doesn't fit. Yeah. Like, hmm. <laughs> it doesn't have a name. It doesn't have like a proper name either. It's yeah. just labeled bar. This like it's a like a like a, a concept given location. form. Yeah. Hello. Are y'all open? <gasps> 
Sque sneakers. <laughs> I told you. I told you to hear every single step someone would make. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, un I understand. I understand that it seems like I have really arcane knowledge, but I re I've just been to a lot of bars. Okay, <laughs> I've been really through this before. <laughs> just the visual novel experience of describing something that feels oddly specific and whatever tangent, and then two seconds later it happens, and all these playthroughs <laughs> is incredible. I hear someone shuffling around in the back. I guess when it's this dead, you don't exactly need to be front and center. Uh, um, I, I hope I'm not being a bother, I say, putting up, up making a puddle in the foyer. <laughs> I know what, I know what it means when he says that, but it's, it's just funny to imagine him just like peeing in fear. <laughs> <laughs> His piddle puddle. His pity piddle puddle. There we go. Still no response. It's unsettling. I feel the need to fill the dead air. Sure is nasty out there, eh? Haha. <laughs> uh, I hate this. Uh, look, if, if you're not open, I, I can go. No, no, please. This expression That's a voice kind I'm committing of, to. Yep. I'm just committing to it. <laughs> this expression kind of looks like something just landed on his nose. Oh yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. I'll be at your beck and call in just a moment, sir. A male voice. Deep. I hear him awkwardly shuffling around before emerging from the kitchen. Ah, it's the mask. <laughs> He's it's, it's not what I thought he would be. <laughs> yeah, that is not an otter. That is a rabbit with slightly terrifying uh, Donnie Darko mask. He looks like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was born in the darkness, sir. Batman, but with the goofiest... Look, it would be so goofy <laughs> if Batman actually committed that hard to the ears. Oh. Now proudly tending the bar is a tall, portly rabbit wearing a well-tailored suit. He gives me a charming smile, acting as if he hadn't kept me waiting. It works. Oh no, he's hot! <laughs> he hums to himself while drying some freshly washed glasses. He'd be totally unremarkable if not for the strange leather mask covering his face and ears. It makes him other his otherwise cuddly appearance a little sinister. This is where it reveals that he's in a death game now, and he's he's been warped into an otherworldly dimension <laughs> where he needs to he needs to beat a bunch of people at like pool or something in order to survive. <laughs> That's the anime pitch for Burroughs. You were having a bad day, so we sent you to a liminal space with a rapid bartender that's kicked out to the next state. You actually did die as you were crossing the road back there, and this this <laughs> is purgatory. <laughs> Being a possum is ironic. He notices me making a wet spot, but <laughs> stop saying it that way. <laughs> You're gonna make Howley blush, Captain Nico, stop. <laughs> Just the way that... <laughs> It's the fact that the the creation of the of the puddle keeps being verbed like it's an act yep. is the is why it's, it it just reads just slightly distressing. <laughs> he notices me making a wet spot by the door and waves me over with a a, a friendly grin. Sure is coming down out there, ain't it? Sure is. He speaks in that slow, charming Louisiana drawl I grew to love after moving here. He gestures for me to come and sit down, and I trot over, my soaking wet paws slapping against the hardwood floors. He's still barefoot, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the sprite moved down. Yeah, he sank. The bunny doesn't seem to mind the potential property damage and smiles as I awkwardly squeeze onto one of the vinyl-covered bar stools. Timeline. Ray there is a Virgil. exclamation point. Oh, his yeah. name's Virgil. This is the there is the, a the, exclamation point beside this too. Like there's other tabs on the document. No, oh yeah, I saw that too. But no, that's not. Fuck, that's a coincidence. Oh, okay. So this is a defining moment in his life. Yeah, it's showing oh, up next to timeline. These tabs don't work. 
Oh, oh, gotcha. I yeah. see what you're saying. That was like that was like weirdly framed. I was like, did we unlock a different section of the notebook? Oh yeah, no. The the first time I opened this menu, I clicked <laughs> on this tab trying to open it because the exclamation <laughs> point. It's the issue with like busy UIs like that. Yeah, the stylization can be interpreted as more data. The feeling of my damp ass against the grippy seat <laughs> sends a shiver of displeasure up my spine. You can't accuse this story of not knowing exactly who it was written for. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Think about my moisturized ass, audience. I shake it off and look at the rabbit who's staring back, expectantly. Anything I can get you, sir? Our bar's fully stocked with only the finest imported liquors. And only the finest service to go with it. One of them is very tall, or the other one is very short. Maybe he's wearing platform heels. <laughs> <laughs> he's just the only digitigrade character in the setting. Stop coming for this bunny's shoes, Keith. <laughs> Where was the service when I first got here? Sir, it's been seconds. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Hmm. Might as well take a shot in the dark. Can you get me a gimlet? This is not a shot in the dark. That is like the most com common drink of the time period. A gimlet <laughs> and a mint julep were like the two things everyone drank. It's like going Surely. into it's like going oh, out in modern life and being like, do you have Jack Daniels? I'm not sure if you've heard of it. <laughs> Can I, could you possibly do to make me a rum and coke? I know that's really unreasonable. <laughs> They got this crazy uh, new thing in Seattle. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called a fireball. <laughs> Surely. Do you mind if it's on the sweeter side? We're, at a, we're a tad low on gin. None of that bathtub stop, mind you. N not at all. Thank you. Oh, but of course. Order for Mr. Possum. Coming right up. Do you think that the top part of his face, or part, or is like his, he has like a mask of fur that is black, or did he, does he put eye makeup on every day to match his mask, like Batman does? <laughs> you mean does? like does he eye, does he shave his eyelids and then put eye black on them like he's Batman? <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite details of the new Batman movie is he takes off his mask and he's just covered in like eyeliner because that's the only yeah. way you can have black eyes with that mask without them looking weird like a pup mask. Yeah, he's like That's a footballer. what's missing. That's why grease. pup masks look so fucking uncanny and weird to me. They need to all wear, like, eye black to make it match the surrounding mask. Actually, <laughs> he pulls I, off, I have no idea if that would look better You're partying with a dude who pulls off his pup hood and all of a sudden looks like Liz Salander from Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit out there. That's all I'm going to say. It doesn't bring great imagery to the forefront. Not a great association to have. <laughs> Enjoy your drawing prop for the day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he starts shuffling around behind the counter. I take a better look at him now that, now that I'm up close. He's husky, for sure. There's power underneath that cage of fluff. He bounced with that sound. <laughs> I can tell from the way he's effortlessly he effortlessly shuffles bottlenecks through his fingers as though they weighed nothing. I imagine it simply comes with a job in this part of the town. Though he'd make a better bouncer than bartender. Guy can barely fit behind the counter. What's with the mask, anyway? Mardi Gras was a few weeks ago. It doesn't exactly look festive. If anything, it looks like some perverse take on... L'homme en masque de fer. The mask of red death. You guys like when my voice changed for a second there? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a polyglot, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my French is a little bit bad. I probably pronounced I probably pronounced that a little wrong, a little rusty, but... His demeanor is anything but macabre, though. It just... I'm just looking for excuses not to like this fellow. He occasionally looks back at me, clocking my stares. I expect at least a glimmer of disgust, the kind of homophobic recoil I've grown used to. Instead, he's still pleasantly <clears throat> smiling at me. He clearly takes pride in his showmanship, 
gliding with ease from bottle to bottle. It's like some sort of dance. It's nice, seeing someone who found what they were clearly meant to do. Some people can just make it work. With a gentle pour into a gold-rimmed cocktail glass, he finishes the drink, garnishing it with a thinly sliced lime wedge. Looks amazing. Oh, I, for some reason I just totally forgot. It wasn't in quotes. Please enjoy. Uh, thanks. I take a slow sip, letting the taste of alcohol linger on my tongue for a few seconds before I gulp it down. In mere seconds, twelve years of sobriety get thrown out the w- Oh. Well, He's on a downward spiral. Yeah, this is a bad day. We, <laughs> Everything we learned is bad. There's a now. <laughs> furry visual novels about falling off the wagon. Oh, yeah. You know, it's one of those things where it's not too weird that it comes up, but it has come up twice in recent memory. <laughs> twelve years of sobriety get thrown out the window. I'm sure my sister would be seething right now if she could see me. So he's used to getting homophobic reactions, so it's not like this game's gonna be like his gay awakening or anything. Uh, yeah. But he had a bouquet from a woman. It could be bi, or it could be a completely different context entirely. We don't know what he's doing today. But it's not good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well. The, the game sweet... disagrees with you, Keith. <laughs> yeah, directly. I've been, I feel very called out. The sweetness is chased by that familiar burn with that the strong stuff always delivers. Most places here water the drinks down, so this is a nice change of pace. After, or you just aren't used to drinking for over ten years, so you don't really remember what it feels like, and it's surprising you. Yeah. After the tingling in my throat subsides, I relax my shoulders, feeling calm for the first time in days. Maybe weeks. I've never... I don't think I've ever had a shot of anything that would give me any kind of, like, reaction that you see in movies. Of like, oh, it's, oh, that's, oh my goodness, that's the stuff. Oh, wow. I mean, I've like never the, had a shot of anything that I've gone like, oh, yeah, I immediately, that was so satisfying and good. <laughs> I've, feel like, I've like had the shots burn, that are like tolerable. The, the recoil people have. I've never experienced yeah. that. Oh, I definitely have. When we were at... Uh, LVFC and Stephanie handed me her, her wild turkey. I took a sip of that and was like, nope. <laughs> nope. Was it because of the Breathe burn or because or or it, it tasted bad? Um, it's like a it's like a well how do I explain this to someone who is who I'm trying to explain <laughs> it for the uh, people in the audience as well who maybe haven't had that kind of drink. It's very harsh and it does burn. Not in the way that like putting rubbing alcohol on a cut burns, but it's it's just like imagine for a second you took a bite of a really hot hot wing and you breathed out. Like you get that that debated uh -huh. tongue feeling from that. That's what getting a sip of some like really harsh, you know, alcohol is like. Uh but for the most part it's there's also like a um, Usually when people do that, like when I do that, it's because I'm trying to clear the the fumes, for lack of a better word, out of my <laughs> mouth. Like, you'll take a shot and then swallow it as quickly as you can to kind of force it down, and then exhale to just get as much of the air out of your mouth that was lingering out so that you can chase it and kind of wash that taste out of your mouth. Because usually the taste of alcohol itself and, like, the drink that you're drinking isn't actually the bad taste most people associate, especially people who aren't used to drinking or haven't done a lot of drinking in their life, uh, don't like. It's usually not the alcohol itself or the drink itself. It's the aftertaste and like the your palate being hit with like the back end of a drink and like for not to be gross, but like remixing with like the rest of your spit and whatever other tastes are in your mouth and the air that's in your mouth that can be really astringent. So. It just it can be pretty brutal when you take a, a drink of something that especially has like an intense uh, mm. kind of hot flavor profile, like you know, like a, a real scotch or something. They can go down pretty rough, uh, and that's that's even if you like them. Like uh, people joke, like I I like drinking. I think it's fun, and 
I like the taste of a lot of alcoholic drinks. But like people will watch me drink and they'll be like, you don't look like you're having a good time. Like you're you're frowning or you're like grimacing. And it's like, yeah, like that's just it's just like literally my physical reaction. It doesn't matter how much I like the taste or like enjoy the experience of having like a nice crafted drink like I just frown. It's like how some people will drink coffee and frown because it's so bitter. It just contorts your muscles and like makes your throat do weird things. So yeah, I guess I guess I've just never had a uh, I've never been handed a shot of anything that like fazed me. Yeah. What was Zach handing out? He was giving us like coconut vodka or something. Oh, you so. <laughs> Uh, here's a sidebar. We went remember. to Zach's hotel room while we were waiting, killing time, and he <laughs> had a bottle of Malibu. That's just coconut rum. It's very That's low, rum. low alcohol content. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> he just needed to get through the bottle because he couldn't take it back home on a plane with him. So he just did <laughs> shots of Malibu, which like for most people listening to this might have experience with this, but like for people who aren't aware. Malibu is like a mixer. It's something you're supposed to mix with other drinks. It is not very <laughs> alcoholic on its own. So you get this like unpl like doing shots of Malibu is like kind of a waste. There's no reason to actually do it. <laughs> but whatever. We were just helping him out. I'm noticing they they both have and I don't know if this is like a prohibition handshake or something, but they they both have a pin on their collar on their little Yeah. That, and they both well, have he mentioned, is it a little pill? Yeah, he I mentioned that he didn't need he didn't need it anymore. So it might be like a speakeasy thing where yeah. you like need to have a certain pin to to flag that you're not a narc. <laughs> That's all it takes, huh? I mean, hey. I remember Zib, the best character in Lackadaisy, getting arrested and losing his shit when he realized that he was still wearing his pin in jail. One of the one of those are really good sequence actually. After the tingling in my throat subsides, I relax my shoulders, feeling calm for the first time in days, maybe weeks. All right. Before this hits my brain, let's go everything once mo one more time, just to be sure. First, they'll find the note by my bed. Mmm. Sounding like suicide again. Maybe. I'm sure Simone will be mostly confused. Etienne will be angry. Neither will believe it. No telling what Jean will say. Either way, they'll probably try looking for me right away. I'm gonna head east. Find some tall trees well away from the roads. Mm. And then... Fuck, I was on the right page immediately. I look up and notice the bartender staring intently at me. Guess I got lost in thought. Shouldn't he be used to folks drowning their sorrows in booze by now? Her, I don't mean to pry, but... Thoughts been troubling, troubling you, boss? Great. He's the chatty type. Yeah, you could say that. I'm not keen on bearing my soul to a random barkeep, friendly or not. Bro, don't go into a bar that doesn't play music and expect to get pure silence. What are you doing? <laughs> that, that tripped me up. He he dried up. Yeah. Zzzz. Oh, Zzzz. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not keen on bearing my soul to a random barkeep, friendly or not. At least I can feel myself drying off. Aw, oh, naturally. A solemn little possum slinking out of his den to drink his troubles away. And on a night like this... You'd have to be down on your luck. Well, I won't poke the bear. Every man has his reasons. But please, don't hesitate to let me know. If I can help you, ease whatever's ailing you, sir. I take great pride in pleasing my patrons. Rain or shine. Yeah, <laughs> right. You just, you just run, running on all the double entendre for yeah, interpretations. Yeah, I mean, you trip over like twelve of them in the course of a single <laughs> line of dialogue. <laughs> yeah, right. As if this is a problem that can simply be swept away. I glance over at the t the game tables once again. I wonder if this was his way of convincing people to waste their money on him. Would you be interested in a game or two, perhaps? Bingo. No, I can see his cards. finger. 
Yeah. <laughs> I can see his, his fingers twitching compulsively. He must be a dealer. Sorry, not my vice. Such a curious thing, those vices. It can be a man's destruction or his salvation, depending on the day. Either way, gambling ain't my preferred method of self-destruction. Hmm, and what, if I may ask, is? Mm. <laughs> One of these things is Booze, not like the other. sex, running away, in that order. <laughs> uh, man. What a call. What's the most thematically appropriate? I if, mean, realistically, if, I don't think anyone would say running away. <laughs> No. <laughs> Sex is just quite the conversation to have, and booze... If it is, you've avoided it for over a decade. But it is, it's like the conversation quitter. It's like, my vice is this dumbass. The thing we're doing right now. Yeah. I like that option, though, because, I mean, it does try to shut him up. It aligns with his goals, right? Yeah. Oop. Drink. That's why I'm here. But of course. You sure that's what's troubling you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I make an obscene gesture with my hands. That's not much of a vice. Why, I do it all the time. I don't think we're talking about the same thing. You sure that's what's troubling you? Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. New desktop wallpaper just dropped. <laughs> I guess... I just don't want to deal with my problems anymore. Why even lie at this point? He's no therapist, but he wants to listen. He's definitely getting more than he bargained for. But so is everyone who knew me. Knew? You meant nose, right? Not really. The liquor's loosened my lips, but I don't care. Look, you really don't know me, mister. I'm not a good man. I tried to do what was expected of me. I tried to go against everything I was taught to believe. And in the end, I sided with the wrong people. I left the ones who really cared for me behind to fucking rot. So then I thought, oh, I could just come back to him as if no time had passed and everything will be all hunky-dory. Bat law that did. I got shamed, rejected, used. Messed up the only good relationship I ever had. Nothing ever felt the same after that. When you completely destroy a person, you know, build up their confidence and then just break it down at the most at their most vulnerable and you have to live with that knowing why they never shine quite as brightly as they used to all because of an impulse decision you made so what am I left with Simone looks at me like a fragile little egg that could break at any moment her eyes are always so tired Jean only sees me as a tenant Lord knows he's given me more chances than most. At least that apartment will be in better hands now. And that tin? <laughs> he just sees me as a punching bag who keeps letting him stick his... I stop myself, almost letting something dangerous slip to a total stranger. He must pour with his heavy... He must pour with a heavy hand. One drink shouldn't be enough to get me going like this. Oh. My hand is shaking. I squeeze my eyes shut as my breathing gets heavy. Fuck. Not right now. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Can all of this just fucking stop? <laughs> yeah. 
awkwardly long stare. <laughs> now, now kiss. <laughs> Suddenly, I feel his big, warm paws close over mine. My shaking stops. I can't tell if it's his calming aura or his, his strength. Regardless of why, I can breathe easy again. It pains me to see you going through so much strife. It really does. Then why are you smiling? It's... It's nothing. Forget I said anything, really. I rest my face on my hands and sigh. I didn't feel any better after saying all that out loud. Maybe if it was someone who actually mattered. He's being so sweet right now, though. I can't help but imagine how things would be if we met in a different night. Who knows? Maybe we could have been friends. I feel a slight sting as my fingers pass over the scratch from those ropes and remember something important. Hmm? Roses. Yep. <laughs> Very, <laughs> Very different, different implications. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if someone named Christine comes by looking for me, can you give her this? Tell her I won't need it where I'm going. And that I'm sorry. He takes the ring in his large paw and inspects it before pocketing it and nodding. Weirdly, I imagine him trying to fit it onto one of his massive fingers. If it will put your mind at ease. It does, in a way. That was the final preparation. While it doesn't completely wipe away the guilt, there's nothing left to tie me to this place. That is... Hmm? If you could indulge me in a simple gamble. I roll my eyes. I already told you. He stops me and holds a hand out, rolling a gold coin across his knuckles. So dexterous. It's nothing like that. Just a simple coin toss. Think of it as a good omen towards his travels. Before I can protest, he flicks the coin into the air. It catches the light, glimmering as time seems to slow for a moment. He catches it with the same hand and slams it back on the desk, all in one swift motion. A trick he's likely done hundreds of times before. Call it. Tails, cuz butts. Butts! I always pick tails. Tails. A choice befitting a man like you. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Called for filth. Wow. Get clocked. Yeah, just got called for getting the free space in gay bingo. <laughs> he lifts his hand and reveals... Hands. I slump my shoulders. Now what? Yeah, I was really expecting him to, like, introduce stakes before the result. <laughs> Shame you didn't place anything on it. Ah, but didn't anyone tell you, son? Bets are best made when you already know you won. Lucky for you, I'm feeling generous today. All I ask of you is one simple task. Fair enough. What is it? Not fair enough. <laughs> you can't just introduce <laughs> something afterwards. <laughs> Nothing about this is actually fair, but who am I to argue with a 500 pound bunny? So we're just like, yeah, so he is fucking huge then. He's like yeah, eight feet gigantic. tall or something. He's so big. Why is he so big? He reaches under his collar and pulls out a black playing card. He slides it across the counter to me, grinning coyly. He keeps it pressed down in front of me for an uncomfortably long time. Almost as if to make sure I know it's not a normal playing card. I nod, and he pulls his hand back, going back to polishing that perpetually dirty glass. Just keep that on you for the time being. There's someone you have to give it to. Who? Oh, you'll know him when you see him. 
This is like a river stick situation. <laughs> Trust me. Just wear this playing card over your eyes and... <laughs> okay, then. Well, I might as well oblige. This could be the last person I talk to. He gestures towards the door before facing away from me, tending to his bar. Sounds like it calmed down out there. Better get going before all hell breaks loose again. He was right. It was suddenly very quiet. Even the sounds of people and cars were strangely absent now. It was still pitch black out. Maybe even more than before. It's been nice. Uh... You can call me Virgil, sir. Oh, this is a Dante's Inferno thing. Virgil mm. is the person that guided Dante through the underworld. He's gonna go Literary through the... Literary illusions. to go through the circles. Yeah. That's why he asked what our vice was. Yep. Hope to see you again. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't see that happening. Not in this lifetime. And yet, something is telling me not to go. Some lingering shred of doubt. Come on. Give me a reason to stay. <laughs> right. Oh, this is you. <clears throat> I'll be going now, Virgil. Tell me not to go. See you around, Mr. Possum. You won't. Doesn't anyone realize they won't? Defeated, I get up and head for the door. Even though I want to leave, I feel a sinking pit in my stomach, like something awful is waiting for me on the other side. I've already made up my mind about it. There's no point in pussyfooting around this. Is that like a slur in a furry universe? <laughs> to to I... call something pussyfooting? That seems <laughs> racially insensitive. <laughs> That's just a foot kink. I take a deep breath and march towards the door defiantly. What is this feeling? I get about halfway before my legs feel heavy, as if I'm wearing sandbags around my ankles. I almost fall from the sudden resistance, but I take a deep breath and keep pushing. Oop. Wonka hallway. The room almost seems to stretch away from me. I try to look behind me, but the view of the room refuses to change. Fixed at one point like a painting. My head starts pounding. Was I really that much of a lightweight, or...? I suddenly feel the intense glare of a predator burning in my blind spot. What? Oh! That's even... Oh! Goodbye, Gray. That's even more Donnie Darko looking. Very. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go! <laughs> a primal sense of dread forces me back around as I sprint towards the door. Ignoring the burning in my thighs from what's, what feels like lifting hundreds of pounds with each step. We've hit the, the furry visual novel bass drop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this, is, this is where the, the floor just cuts out from underneath us and the game goes full yep. horror. Yep. You can't have a furry visual novel that doesn't have some sort of incredibly eldritch cosmic horror hidden underneath <laughs> the surface. <laughs> things, things escalated very rapidly when he got up. Like the cut, music including slaps. the cutaways to the internal thoughts, like all these little, these little tricks. It was getting style. We got, got really stylistic really quickly. Yeah. The hallway keeps stretching an impossible distance, but I can't stop moving. Not with that thing behind me. Okay, so we saw that. Fuck! 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 My knees turn to jelly, and I collapse. I can barely catch my breath. My heart is beating out of my chest. What the hell is going on? Did he put something in my drink after all? Am I gonna die here like this? No. Not like this. On my terms. I grab the dirty carpet and pull myself off the floor. The door seems to have stopped moving away. Almost seeming to do so out of pity, the bastard. I start crawling. 
Pain shooting through my knees each time they come down. Tears are burning down my face, and I resist the urge to vomit. Time loses all meaning as I pathetically inch forward. Darkness fades into the sides of my vision. The idea of blacking out is sounding better and better by the second. But I can't. Something is telling me not to give in. I feel something burning against my leg. Something in my pocket. I take another deep breath and gather all my remaining energy for one final dash. The shadows in the room seem to warp into exaggerated shapes as I lean forward into this into sprinting position. The gravity on me is suddenly released, and I sail towards the door. I make contact with the knob, and the room is flooded with intense red light. An impossibly loud siren blares behind me. I barely register any of it, and fling the door open. The same inky black that seemed to surround the building before is now staring me in the face. I swear I can see it blink. And just like that, it's all around me. My body is violently corkscrewed into the void in front of me. You're having a day. With any sense of direction gone, my feet flail uselessly. Searching for a solid surface. For anything. My stomach lurches, and I anticipate the urge to throw up. But I just feel... Empty. Even though my vision is gone, my body knows it's upside down, and goes into panic mode. I inhale, but no air enters my lungs. I can't do anything but hopelessly choke on nothingness. Organs weren't meant to be in suspended animation. My limbs are slowly going numb one by one. Is this...? Huh. I always thought death would come quickly. There were times I begged for it. I'd clung to the hope that I would be snuffed out like a candle. that my consciousness would be obliterated before I was given time to register the pain. Indeed, it seems death is cruel. An agonizingly slow torture where I drift helplessly as infinity passes me by. Ironically, that's the one gift I've been given. Time. Time to reflect on everything. Every little mistake. Every time something I said came out funny to a person I liked. Oh no, my greatest nightmare. <laughs> Thinking on it, I'd found something to like in almost everyone I'd met. Huh. I think about everything we could have done. All the precious moments we wasted. I'm a corpse. There's no point in wondering what could have been. My body is entirely numb now. I don't even feel the need to blink anymore. My jaw hangs open, tongue hard as stone. Something breaks through the icy black. I'm... not alone? There are others here, in the dark with me. They drift aimlessly, sometimes phasing through one another. He's just experiencing like ego death. This is this is this like is a what lot, yeah. that is like yeah. He's like full on tripping after this, you know. Whether or not he was drugged or this was an actual like spiritual supernatural space, like he's going to leave this bar a very changed person. Yeah, it's it's just it's just full of shrooms the entire drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he Here brewed him sh shroom shots. Uh, oh, gross. <laughs> this is quite the trick to pull, too. Yeah. The limb darkening on the screen and the scrolling background. I wonder if this it is, is even, very cool. I wonder if this even is Renpy or not. This is Renpy, yeah. yeah. I, I, looking in the game files, it's, it's Renpy. Even the little, like, continue dialogue thing spins. Yeah, it's all- it's such high quality. Like, the... 
the the overall production value is very impressive. It's clearly done by a team of creatives that really know what they're doing and have a vision, which is really respectable. Like jellyfish floating through the endlessness of the ocean. Ghosts. Were they tricked too? Ah, uh, it's no matter. How we ended up here isn't important. Just that we still exist at all. I... feel some sort of connection with them. Our bodies are gone, but our emotions can extend like extra limbs. They gently caress each other with them, as some primitive form of communication. Using the last ounce of focus I've saved for what feels like centuries, I release my thoughts outward, like the roots of a tree. Contact. I want to ease their pain. I use my most potent memory, the first time I fell in love. They'll be spared the violent aftermath. I can afford them that much, at least. Hmm. They smile, I think. That feeling was the only solace I could offer, and yet somehow, knowing that it made them happy, even just a little, that's the most important thing, feeling in the world to me. This is how things should be. God damn it. Why, did, why didn't I help anyone when it really mattered? I waited and waited for someone to save me while ignoring what everyone else was going through. I want to try again. I need to try again. Please, don't make me beg. As soon as that thought crosses my mind, my, my drift suddenly accelerates. Was I heard? Was it... him? Wind starts to rustle the fur on my face. I must be falling. Warmth returns to my limbs, and my bones crack, popping back into place. Life is pouring back into me. Air fills my lungs, and fresh tears moisten my eyes. A glowing light surrounds me, and the air vibrates with friction with friction as I pass through layers of atmosphere towards... something. I brace myself for certain death as the ground pulls up faster and faster, but... <laughs> Nothing. It's so bright. I need... to stand. Hello? It's like a plantation. And by like, I mean it's literally a plantation. Yeah, it's a big estate house. I'm in a grassy field dotted with yellow flowers. Dandelions, maybe? The sky is bathed with golden light, as if time had frozen right at sunset. Glowing particles of light and seed pods float in and out of view as I adjust to my new environment. A lonely crow is cawing somewhere in the distance, and a warm breeze sweeps over the beautiful expanse, eventually passing me, eventually passing me as it drifts towards a familiar-looking building. The old house. A shudder runs through me. Of all the places, the last time I was here, I was looking back in disgust as I left. Its deteriorated state brought me some modicum of joy, however small. This, so far, the way that this novel's, like, setting up very much reminds me of moments of the house in Fata Morgana. Especially with the music choices and the way that it's playing with time periods and go, moving back and forth between, you know, memories and stuff. It's got a very similar stylistic approach. This is this is interesting. I'm enjoying this. this is, it's it's cool to see a furry visual novel attempt this type of storytelling. Uh, 
And what I mean by that is a much more, I don't want to say experimental, but like a, a much more literary take on what visual novels can be. This is very, very similar to the stuff um, that you would see in something like Fata Morgana or, or even Umineko than something like maybe uh, even Echo or Arches was. Those were very, very scene driven, very screenplay like visual novels um, where everything kind of exists in the moment and you're dealing primarily with dialogue driven uh, interactions. Whereas a lot of this has been like mostly internal monologue and yeah. uh, memory, really specifically. And you know, Echo does that a little bit, and Arches does that a little bit. But this, this has been very interested in setting a scene um, and, and kind of playing with this weird liminal memory space that you can live in in a visual novel. It's, it's interesting. It's it's. Yeah, we've, a, we've literally been alone for most of the story so far. Yeah. Or a lot of this it. This is very different. <laughs> very than different usual. than what I expected. I did, yeah, I, didn't, I did not know we were getting ourselves into it all, but it wasn't this. <laughs> <laughs> the moment the scrolling background ego death haloed head galaxy screen happened, <laughs> I was like, I did not know what was going to happen in this at all. Yeah. Whatever grandeur it had once had was replaced by peeling paint and rotted wood stagnant, just like its occupants. Yet the house I'm looking at now is nothing of the sort. It looks as cozy and welcoming as it did as when I was a kid. When we were kids. Sam. Fuck, did he... go through this too? Oh, Sam's dead. Oh, Sam's the one that he thinks Etienne tricked and or Simone tricked into eating the mud pies. Yeah, probably. I, I think, think that's, that's the what same it was. Name. Yeah, that's the friend group member that died. I fall to my knees. Did he die or did he just leave first? Well, they said, did he go through this too? And he thinks he's dead. Oh, I was. I thought when I read that, I thought he was talking about like looking back at the house in disgust as he was leaving. <laughs> Maybe I think it's he's thinking back to when they're kids. He remembers Sam, and then he he yeah. then is twinged with like thinking about what he's going through right now, which makes me think that Sam died. He's wondering if this was what he experienced. Yeah. I fall to my knees, the lush foliage, the lush foliage caressing my tired body in a warm hug. The sudden rush of stimuli after being frozen for so many years hits me all at once, and my eyes begin to well up. In my weakest moments, I craved coming back to this place. I wish we could have all played together here, not just the other Oakfield kids. Etienne, Simone, maybe even Jean, if we had known him then. Everyone deserves to experience this. Forcing myself to stand, I shake away some final tears. I want to explore this place again, even if I'm alone. I walk out towards the house. Scared the front door would start to inch away from me like it did that hallway. Come on now. No more tricks, okay? It almost feels wrong. Like I'm trespassing or something. In the real world, that might hold some truth. But here? There couldn't possibly be another soul around for miles. This place was created just for me. I'm sure of it. The old wooden steps creak under my weight. I place a cautious hand on the banister and give it a loving squeeze, remembering every handmade curve. I give in and grab both rails propelling myself onto the stoop with a single leap, an act I'd been scolded for as a kid many a time. Whoops. I'm no kid anymore, though. My back's already flaring up again. Back problems in the afterlife? What is- this is hell. Yeah. Welcome to the circle no of the back- the, Welcome the, to the back <laughs> pain circle. <laughs> the, the forward march of time comes for us all, e even in the ethereal plane. Yeah. Dante's Inferno is actually made up of entirely mundane hell circles. 
This is the circle of hell where people just are 50% more likely to stub their toe. It's the, there's the circle of hell where no matter where you look, you can't find your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> the circle of hell where you turn on your computer and Windows did an update of some kind, but you can't really tell what it was. So you have to open every program one by one to figure out what <laughs> settings changed. <laughs> no. The, uh, the circle of hell where, for whatever reason, you were logged out of a website and now you need to figure out how you, where your login token is so that you can get back <laughs> in. <laughs> Sign off of the comments with your moderately in <laughs> inconvenient circle of hell. <laughs> where there's no angry governess here with a wooden spoon, ready to assault my poor little hands. You weren't poor, you can't trick me. Yeah, she's it's, there to assault your rich little hands. Yeah. It's dumb, but I can't help myself but giggle. I feel like an overgrown kid revisiting an old playground. I walk past the porch, fondly tracing a finger across the rocking chair Mother used to sit in while sipping uh, breakfast tea. <laughs> I'm thinking of the, sorry, I'm just thinking of the stupid gay bingo card and the fact that one of the squares was says Mother. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two of them already. He got, he got the gate. He got the free space, which is be a bottom, and he's got mother. <laughs> we don't know if he can drive or not. This is, this is a stupid joke. A rustic copper bell sits above the door. Mom would grow to resent that bell, and I'll, I'd get yelled at for coming and going too often. For some reason, I can't bring myself to go inside. It feels like the second I go open that door, this lovely dream will end. Like I'm going backwards. My thoughts are in interrupted by a sudden snapping noise behind me. I whip around, looking frantically to either side of me. The coast seems clear. Still, my instincts tell me that to at least check on my surroundings. I'm still on guard, despite everything being so pleasant. I slide down the banister and crouch into the tall grass, hoping it's enough to conceal my presence. Should probably check out those tall trees. Or maybe. Unfortunately, a blade of grass found its way up my nose. Ooh, ooh what are you doing up there, blade of grass? Gross. Uh, <laughs> I just don't like, I don't like that, the concept of that feeling. That was loud. Was that, a, was that a sneeze noise? Rewind. <laughs> See it sounded it it sound like he fucking slimed the room. <laughs> I don't like that sound. <laughs> Gross. I don't like that sound at all. It's really gross. We, tur we turned off the NSFW settings. I know. <laughs> that should be God. muted too. <laughs> Okay, looks like the coast is more rustling. I hold my breath, trying to conceal my presence as much as possible. Even though you think this world is only yours. Hello? Anyone out there? So much for my theory of this being my own personal purgatory. Give it a rest. Shouting like that ain't a good idea. Dude, you don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> they don't sound malicious. Annoyed, if anything. I definitely heard someone sneeze just now. Look harder. Shit. Well, I have two options. I either hide until they go away. Or suck it up and hope they can they can help me figure out what's going on. I mean, I would want to know what's happening. Is that a tail? Rat, maybe? Okay. Option B it is. Uh, I'm a marsupial, damn it. The group gasps. Maybe three or four people? Just come out. We won't hurt you. Well, maybe this one will, but... Quiet, Mutt. 
yare yare. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I have no idea how many people are talking or like yes, what they're. No, they're it's, 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 so it's like to... it's completely unclear. This could be nine people or two of them or four of them. Like I have no yeah, idea. But no, that one's Japanese for sure. <laughs> there's no like color coding or like description to replace the names, like husky voice or whatever. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. We'll we'll make up voices afterward. But that Japanese yeah. person, that's funny. <laughs> yare yare. <laughs> it's now or never. I bet the shark is Japanese. Oh god, maybe. I poke my head out to see four figures cautiously walking towards me from the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for him somehow. <laughs> no, he looks very funny. He looks straight from the 80s. Yeah. Oh my god, oh, are they lot. actually in a death game? Did Maybe. they all get transported into a purgatory? They're all from different time lot, like time frames? I wonder. Because he's About... wearing like a gold chain. Like he looks like he's from the 80s. Oh. Hmm. Is one just gonna. Is, is... <laughs> what if he's not Japanese? What if that other guy's just like a modern weeb? <laughs> He's like a 2010s e-boy. <laughs> really into anime. A well-dressed canine in glasses, carefully stepping around the flowers. It's got like a got like a skin tight like belly button showing like sweater turtleneck under a blazer. I, That's like a lot. I think it's yeah. He looks very 80s to me. <laughs> I was fucking right. He's wearing oh headphones. Oh my god! The cut-off jeans, the fucking, <laughs> the fucking labeled underwear, the belly peak, the fucking. He's got, he's got the what do you call him? The the divots in his eyebrows and shit. Oh and yeah, so he, he these does. These people are extremely from different time time periods. <laughs> This guy this was not. This guy was not turn. walking around in the Prohibition era like this. No. <laughs> this is maximum himbo OC all at once. Oh my goodness! A hefty shark was, wearing ripped clothing, stumbling over the uneven ground. I was really not expecting this. Got a biker daddy. A panther in leather, scowling at the other three with his arms in his pockets. It's like, welcome to gay hell, everybody. This is where you end up when you die, when you're gay. A fox so small, only his ears poke above the grass, pushing his way through well-worn leather gloves. Are you from, like, 200 years ago? I don't know. He Are looks like steampunk. Oh, <laughs> he looks wait, like... wait. He's Japanese. Is he? Look at his pants. Oh, he is. You are correct. Yeah. So yeah, this must be uh, pre-war. This must be made Meiji era, maybe, just because he does have like westernized, yeah, clothing. He's like a blacksmith or yeah. something. It looks like. Yeah, he would be like a blacksmith or maybe a rail worker. He could fold me a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a motley crew. At least they seem friendly. This guy never found out about belts, though. Yeah. Tall dog. I'm shocked <laughs> I'm shocked he's not a main uh maned wolf. Yeah, I think he's just a German shepherd of some kind. Maybe. Like yeah. Something like that. That's what he wolves looks like. aren't canines. Yeah. Wait, are they canines? Shit. I, I'm thinking of hyenas I don't and know. stuff. I don't remember how many if maned wolves are under canine actually. Whatever. <laughs> Alright, who are we claiming? Uh, I claim Japanese guy. Uh uh. uh <laughs> I'll do the dog and the shark, I guess. Okay, I'll do the panther and the and the, <laughs> the fox. Uh, we, we're talking about voices, to be clear. Yeah, claim. <laughs> <laughs> we're not claiming them or doing them in any other sense. <laughs> Don't worry. We're just as spun around as you must be, fella. My fear dissipates as soon as I hear his voice. It's deep and soothing, pouring over me like honey. I was wondering if it was just us four. This sure is a strange place. Yeah, but like, weirdly familiar? I don't know. 
The feline, who's clearly intent on looking annoyed, seems lost in his own thoughts. I still don't like it. The fox rolls his eyes, looking at me with a warm smile. Those... ears. Regardless, who are you, Mr. Marsupial? M me I'm taken aback by their casual nature. Did they not go through the hell I did? I stand up and give them an all-knowing glance, gesturing widely to our surroundings. I'm gray, and uh this wouldn't happen to be heaven, would it? That sounded crazy, didn't it? Yeah. This dude's off his rocker. I'm gonna keep looking for a way out. He pushes past the group and heads back to the tree line. So much for introductions. Kids these days. I really don't like that dude. Where'd you pick him up? That's implying we even know where this is. I shouldn't let it let on that I'm from here. It can make me seem suspicious. True. Hmm. Approximately how long ago did you arrive here? The shark shrugs, glancing at the other two for confirmation. Uh, hard to say. Time's all screwy here. Screwy? You know, like, all messed up and stuff. Sus as fuck, yo. <laughs> he, he has an accent I've never heard before. It's overly casual for the situation, with every other vowel being drawn out. <laughs> it's basically not poggers, bro. No. <laughs> it fits him. His design is nothing if not intimidating. His design. <laughs> <laughs> but he seems to only radiate positive energy. Shock a bra. The wolf sighs, tapping his chin as he thinks. Is he a wolf or a dog? Ah. Might have only been a few minutes, or a few hours. There's no way to really know. Of all the days I chose not to wear a watch, the fox clears his throat. From my observations, the sun doesn't seem to rise or set. I mentally kept track of about two days' time, and the light never changed. He was being sincerely helpful, but his expression looks like he's mocking somebody else for being too nerdy. <laughs> yeah. His face <laughs> says, nye, 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 nye. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay. Two whole days? Wait. Did he say that mentally? Is that even possible without a clock? <laughs> yeah. The little dude was in full Rambo mode when we met him. Shit was wild. It certainly gave me a fright. I apologize. I assumed the worst. So, uh... We all pause to listen. He fidgets around before finally sighing. About that thing you said, Gray. You know, about this being heaven. Do you... You think it's true? I take some pics for the gram? <laughs> I can't think of any other that's, explanation. That's, <laughs> that's totally based. <laughs> just insufferable <laughs> amounts of slang. Just pepper it all in. <laughs> based, it's based for real, bruh. I gotta get home or I'm gonna miss my dailies. Uh, but we shouldn't jump to conclusions. Tiny Fox nods. Correct. We need to take the utmost precaution. I'm just making his voice nerdier and nerdier as he speaks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I propose we split up and search the area. What? His booming voice echoes into the valley, and the wolf angrily shushes him. Shit. Sorry. I, I just mean, like... That seems like a dumb move, right? We can cover more ground if we each pick a direction. The panther already headed north. Yeah, but 
Every time people split up in a horror movie, bad things happen. Or they become routes. I haven't seen enough movies to confirm, but I understand his logic. There were three movies when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> True. But this is the only area so far that has an actual structure, so... It could be worth exploring. The only area so far. So they've been through previous locations. Which kind of... It's, it's potentially telling on the idea that this is his location specifically. Yeah. I go up with the They're idea of They're in like a liminal space that's yeah. like stitched together from their memories. Yeah, I'm thinking about the the episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where Fitz and Simmons share a brain space, so it's made up of their memories and their, and their own past experiences. They're, and of course, because you have to do drama, they're keeping there's things that they don't want to address, so they literally, when they regress, they literally regress into children. Yeah. I go up with the idea of them poking through my old room, but something tells me it's this isn't an exact copy of the real thing. With the rest of us not budging, the shark reluctantly sighs and nods. All right. Oh, I'm ch uh, No, it's it's fine. I'm Gabriel. What was what does that mean? What does that mean? What was that? What I'm, was I'm that just hesitation? trying to figure out who's who's actually talking. Is is he being interrupted or no, is he I think changing? It's the, <laughs> I think it's the shark changing his mind about what to say his name is. Gotcha. I was wondering okay. why he was avoiding that name. Yeah, I wonder. What that means. What's funny is that like, I, I saw art of this game over the last like year or so. So I have been wondering this entire time why the shark looks so out of place in it. <laughs> so yeah. it's good. So now I know. <laughs> now I at least now I know what's going on. I'm like, why does the shark look like someone's OC snuck into this game where everyone else is more like themed, like out like in a very different way? Yeah. Well, maybe he was about to give his username. Like I, I'm Chewbacca uh, Fighter 420. I yeah. mean Gabriel. <laughs> like who knows? I don't, know if, I don't know if he was gonna give his username or his dead name. Oh, yeah, very possible. Like, if it's like, uh, fuck it, nobody knows me here. I'm Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Charmed. I'm Marcus, but Marcus fine. I keep thinking he has a, uh, a, a leg strap with a book on it because of the yeah. UI. <laughs> I keep, I keep double ta uh, taking. I introduced myself to the others already, but my name is Yasahiro. You can call me Hiro if you prefer. And the cat? They shake their heads. He never told us. That guy has a real attitude problem. Can't expect anyone to act rashly in this situation, but still. He rubs a bruise on his arm. Did you get on that guy's bad side? Hero snaps to get my attention, pulling down his goggles with a serious expression. <laughs> it's fucking right, adorable. <laughs> I'll go west, Mark goes east, and Gabriel goes south. Gray, you stay here and check out this house. Uh, okay. Gosh, he sure took the leadership position quickly. He must have seen me on the porch before. Hope he doesn't suspect me of anything. Alright then, I'm off. If any of you find something, be sure to holler. I do wonder if this is a route thing. Like, I wonder, everybody, everybody splits up. We check out the house for a while, get bored, and then pick someone to follow. Yeah. I nod and stay put as everyone marches off to their designated corner. All except Gabriel, who plops down on the grass a few feet away from me. Gabriel? He yawns and puts on his headphones, clicking some strange tiny box in his hand. I can hear the Wait. faint sounds of music emanating from them. How would he know what headphones are? Hmm. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Those definitely were not a thing. When, when, <laughs> when, I don't know. When were headphones invented? They had, like, records by I mean, now, it, didn't they? Yeah, but they were played on, like, gramophones and on, on record players. Like, they weren't... You, you didn't have portable music. Headphones did not exist. 
Uh, I mean, it doesn't mean, I mean that maybe they did in like a switchboard sense, but I think yeah. we were if they were in prohibition, that's 1920s. When were headphones invented? 1891. Yeah, but when did regular people get access to them is the question. Oh, because headphones, you would like you'd recognize headphones from like uh, Morse code station things, Telegra telegraphs, Mo telegraph. You're thinking of like tele yeah, telegrams and Morse code. But even then, most of the time they were holding a receiver up to their ear. They weren't they weren't wearing headphones unless you were like in the military. Uh, yeah, hmm. I don't know. That's weird. He kn he understands that they're headphones, but he's clicking some strange tiny box in his hand. Very <clears throat> odd. I mean, one of those is much older than the other one is. Of course, but... I, I, I could benefit of the doubt this. I'm seeing pictures of really old headphones from like 1910 and shit. Yeah, but like the earliest pair of headphones, for example, was a what looked like one of those old school phone receivers that you just put on a stand that rested on your the side of your head. Like when 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 did they meet? 1930. Yeah, a fair number yeah. of the headphones I'm seeing probably existed by then. And yet that doesn't mean they had to be common use or anything. He just has to have ever yeah. heard of them. <laughs> the, the first consumer headphones came out in the 1950s. So he must maybe he has military backing and background. Yeah. That's how he knows. Which, that was more mandatory back then, too. Yeah. But yeah, he would not know what a phone is. And I guess this is the only person in the modern world who uh, down still downloads music to their phone without using a streaming service. <laughs> no, he just has a great connection to Spotify out here. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically unspotty in, in, in heaven. Maybe that's what makes it heaven. <laughs> I mean, maybe his phone no, does this just is hell again. Work here. This is this is hell again. You have all of your music, and it says it can connect. You have one bar of signal, but nothing will go through. <laughs> this honestly raises other like metaphysical questions about just the fact that the phone came with him. <laughs> yeah. Like what that means on some level. That's interesting. Maybe it, maybe it is just a magic bullshit phone because it's not real, so it just does work. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. I mean, it only can play songs he remembers. Guess he's not the working sort. These millennials these days. Uh, he's oh, he'd be a zoomer. He, I, I can't. I can't keep calling everyone, every adult a millennial now. Everyone's younger than me now, so he's probably a zoomer. Big fan of Fortnite. Guess he's not the working <laughs> sort. Well, I pretty much already explored as much of the old house as I'm willing. I can't shake off that terrible feeling from earlier. Something is definitely waiting behind that door. Something I want nothing to do with. So four of us just agreed what to do, and two of us are immediately not going to do that <laughs> the moment those yep. two walk away. <clears throat> hmm. But I'm going to be stuck here with these guys. I should probably try to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Get some sense of who they are. Hell, maybe I can even find out why we got sent here. If I hear all their stories. <laughs> yeah, this is the root split for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Call that one I saw on the this? nose. <laughs> But who to talk to? Ah, uh, yep. Well, there we go. We, we made it to the root to split. Do, 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 do. You should probably go, go with one of the people you're voicing so that you have some more to do. Yeah, I mean, if you want. The I, I think the or hero. Um, who, who are we most interested in right now? I guess the panther's the biggest mystery. He's, he seems to be the Flynn of the group. Yeah. A stock after him. Get the most suboptimal route order possible by going for Flynn first. <laughs> I mean, we could do him or Hero, I think, you know. Uh, either one would work. I think we'll probably get a lot more information from Hero, but I think yeah. the Panther is the one that is calling to us the most because he's the one that just storms off immediately. Pick one, pick one, pick one, pick one. Panther, I guess. I want to know his name. <laughs> <sighs> well, technically he's part of the group too. He probably wants to be left alone, but I can't overlook him hurting Gabriel. Besides, he's been the most tight-lipped so far. I walk over to where he stormed off. It looks identical to the western side from here, but there's only one way to find out. I have to walk by the old house. I can't even bear to look at it. All that excitement is gone after getting that weird sensation from the front door. Who is this? If this is a panther. I think. <sighs> Nosy. 
I turn around to see him waiting behind the building, leaning against the wall. Oh, <laughs> typo. This yeah, is first, the first one. First one. Y you. You came looking for me, right? Did the Did group they... decide to throw me overboard or something? That'd be a challenge here. <laughs> there's, there's such an attention to shading and, and like wrinkles to highlight both of their bulges. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's no, they're both packing heat. Like, I've, I, it's been so much restraint not to comment on it. <laughs> and then the fucking, <laughs> then the, like, it was a lot with the slacks, then the jeans came in, you're like, all right, here we go. <laughs> I mean, this not guy's wearing literal leather chaps. He's a full-on biker dude. Oh, yeah, no. Full biker gay. Yeah, this is, this is, this is for someone. This is an audience. This is fan service for us. Yep, yep. N no. Why are you hiding back here? Hiding, please. What is there to hide from? This place is empty. We're the only real things here. What? But... The birds? It's just noise. Have you actually seen a bird since you've been here? I mean, I've been here for like 30 seconds. <laughs> they I... turned all the birds gay. <laughs> <laughs> now birds aren't real. <laughs> no birds yeah. are real. They're actually built by the CIA to trick you into thinking birds are real. And that's the end it's of all, the plan. <laughs> it's all mind control. <laughs> I guess not. Something put us here. And I, it's, uh, bleh. Something put us here. And it's watching to see how we react. What makes you so sure, uh... He stubbed his toe. Hey, we're <laughs> in the stub your toe expression. hell. I told you. <laughs> Fuck it. Name's Ken. Heard him call you Gray earlier. Charmed. Anyway, I refuse to play into its hand. Not participating is the only way to get a reaction out of it. So they thought he went off to explore, but he basically just walked to the other side of the building and sat down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, only, so only those two people left. <clears throat> right, but shouldn't you tell the rest of the group that? Group? I never agreed to be tied up with you lot. The only one who seemed worth their salt was the fox. He lost points once he stopped trying to kill us. <laughs> kill? Little hero killing us all. Oh, watch him be like a full on, like batshit crazy. He <laughs> comes after you all in the dead of night with like a machete. <laughs> I, I can he totally has, see it happening. He has eye trails. Yeah, exactly. He he he's the one that like he's like, oh no, my dark passenger is coming out, and then he has a personality shift and becomes like a murderer. <laughs> I can't help watch it. that actually be what fucking happens. <laughs> <laughs> the bad end. <laughs> I want more bad ends in, in furry visual novels. Not that I've sampled that many of them, but what, but what I'm missing yeah. sometimes in Echo is just more chances to pick a slightly wrong option that just makes you die immediately. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, that's just a fun part in a horror game. Even if it's pointless and a dead end and it's whatever. I can't help it. The mental image sends me into a laughing fit. Although the, the one bad end I did get that was a premature bad end was like one of the most intriguing early endings I've seen in a visual novel so far specifically because it had it raised several questions that I didn't have yet at the time <laughs> that was really cool hey I'm serious he had it sharpened a stick in everything <laughs> right stop fucking laughing <laughs> I, I, I can't <laughs> I guess it was kind of funny looking. I hear his deep growl soften into a chuckle. When he smiles, he doesn't look half bad. Alright, maybe this whole thing is pointless. If that's the case, let's make the most of this time. There's no point in moping around. I think we've all wasted too much of our lives doing that. Can't argue with that. Come here. Hug. <laughs> he, sit <laughs> he sits down, gesturing for me to fill the spot next to him. I hesitate. 
He still hurt Gabriel. No one bite. The shark just got too close when I was still freaking out. Look at that smolder face. Oh no. His, his, <laughs> his regretful face is hot. <laughs> that, <laughs> that makes the red flags hotter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you felt bad about it. That means it was okay. Uh, so you were scared. He rolls his eyes and shoots me a slip of a smile, a toothy fang poking past his lips. You gonna sit or not, boss? Yeah, yeah. I plop down next to him and stare at the sky. He always seems to be looking at something I can't quite see. He surprised me by leaning onto me. You... tired? Hmm. Not really. I don't think we get tired here. The fox probably figured that out already. His name's Hero. Whatever. He leans on me a little harder. It's not like I wanted to get to know any of you bozos. <sighs> and why would that be so bad? I hear sniffling. There's no way. Because you're all gonna disappear soon. Oh boy. That is not He's the He's got that... separation anxiety. He's yeah, got abandonment he... issues. He is sobbing. That is not where I thought this was going. I thought he was like, oh yeah, make the. I thought he was going like, oh yeah, make the most of this time, huh? He's just gonna like fucking yeah. like go in hard. They're from a very different eras. Literally. Yeah. What? We we just got here. I just have a feeling, a terrible feeling. They scare me. The others. They can't see this place the way I do. They think it's a paradise. I guess I fall into that camp. But remembering what happened with Virgil has kept me on edge. This place's charm never fully worked on me. I don't completely trust this place either. We have to find a way out of here. There is no way out, don't you get it? so hot <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna let anything happen to us without a fight right now come to the nihilistic orgy <laughs> he lays a head on my shoulder you're not so bad like this you know I know even though this is the end or whatever it ain't easy to let my guard down didn't seem that hard <laughs> but you're being awfully nice to me. It's gray. I rub my shoulder and smile. A hot tear rolls down my cheek, and he leans in to lap it away with his sandpapery tongue. Yeah, going in hard. Wow. Hmm. Do you mind if we stay like this for a little while? Not at all. The clouds roll by for what feels like hours. There's a constant hum in the air that makes it impossible to think too hard about anything. For the first time in a long while, I'm just happy to be alive. Or whatever the state of existence is, considered. Ken's curled up in my arms, gently sobbing while I stroke his head. There's probably no other world where he'd let someone do this for him. I guess there's a sort of peace that comes with accepting this. Ken's been fighting that feeling ever since he got here, and it finally wore him down. After a while, he jolts up, brushing the dirt off his jeans. Okay. I think I got it out of my system. Ready to come back with me and talk to the others? Hmm. Ken. Give me a few minutes. I promise I'll be nice. And apologize to Gabriel. He rolls his eyes and smiles at me. 
and apologize to Gabriel. Kid seemed nice enough. With a nod and a wave goodbye, I head back to the clearing. What a complex guy. I can't really get a, a read on him, but it seems like he's coming to terms with the situation. There's no guidebook on how to act during times like these. I can't judge him too much. Once upon a time, I probably would have reacted just like he did. And that's probably going to be it for today. Yeah, that was a that that's was a really intro. interesting setup. <laughs> I, yeah. have no, I have no idea where, where this is going to go. Me neither. I think I, the that was fascinating. <laughs> yeah, the most intriguing thing is that like, I get the tempt. I like. I, I definitely get the urge to get a series of characters and then put, immediately put them in a, like a non-literal space and having them just have to deal with that throughout the thing. Like, yeah, that's part. Like, I, I was poking at that with with my ideas a bit, but like. What, what the, the 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 detail that's nagging at me is the fact that we have a timeline in reality. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I think, yeah. Like, I imagine I think that what we're going to find other... out... I was going to say, I think what, what we're going to find out is that everything is connected more closely than we realize. Yeah. And it's going to be like, you know, it, and this is just me making shit up, but like... You know, Hero made the what, like was on a plane that was or, <laughs> or was on a boat that like was where whatever uh, Gray's parents immigrated, you know, to the U.S. from. And then down the line, it was like Gray's shipping and distribution company that made the motorcycle that uh, Ken was riding when he got into a car crash. And then Ken got into the car crash with Marcus and, and you know, down the line, the, the shark guy is like working at the company, you know, that was taken oh, over, that, no. you know, something like that. Gray is only 25. Yeah. He was trying to go out early. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was young. It's, the, uh, it's like, this is probably where Hero is. And then yeah, Gray. Yeah, around 1870s and to, then, to 1910s, probably. Uh, Mark? And then Gabriel? Yeah. Gabriel's a 90s Gabriel is for kids. sure. He, well, Gabriel's for sure late, like was probably born in the '90s, but he so he is a millennial. But yeah, uh, assuming they're all like maybe in their 20s, something like that, 20s, early 30s, uh, that would make sense. Which means that the furthest forward timeline with Gabriel probably ends around real life time uh, mm -hmm. for us right now, so 2023. But uh, yeah. I mean, I was joking earlier when I was like, he walked into the liminal space bar and is going to be, you know, made to play a death game. But like, what if that's literally what happens? It's like they have to fucking kill each other or something like or they have to do something high stakes enough that will cause an actual split in the group and in everyone's motivations. And maybe that's how they, they get you to choose one specific person. Uh, to, I'm, all, to I'm also with. wondering whether or not. I'm wondering whether they were all interrupted before their deaths or if they all yes. successfully killed themselves yeah that's my question the the hmm. other thing here that's kind of interesting is just that we've been playing you know for about 2 hours now and uh <laughs> this story has hardly started yeah that's the compared that's to usual. how <laughs> yeah, compared to how far we got, though, in Arches, you know, as an example, Arches, we were deep in it two hours in. Uh, and it makes me wonder, just what is the scope of this project? How long is this thing going to be? Uh, because it currently, the the way that it's paced and the way that things are being set up, like, it's reminding me of visual novels that took me a very long time to read. <laughs> like, this is, this is reminding me of Fata Morgana, which was a 60-hour-long visual novel just for one of the games. And there are technically three different parts of House of Fata Morgana. <laughs> like, it that is a be. very, very long visual novel. Of course, stylization doesn't necessarily mean something is going to be that long, but, like... This has all of the trappings of a like full length commercial production. Uh, and it's, it's kind of interesting. I just am wondering how big this package is going to be. We've only seen two CGs and granted those CGs are, I guess, three technically because the bunny's face. But like they've all been amazing looking. But like, dang, it, it feels this like this is a, a project. bigger project than, yeah, than most of the things I've read. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of like when I played Remember the Flowers and we made it like relatively little happened overall in the in the first two hours. It's, it's kind of a there's just a sort of a pacing thing in, in a lot of her visual novels where you, you feel like you haven't quite started yet when I whenever I do these let's tries. But the uh, I think one of the faster ones was the uh, 922 that yeah went places <laughs> relatively quickly. But yeah, like Archers is like an exception with how like yeah. that, that, that's like a break next story and it's that's been that and then like as you pointed out <laughs> oh fuck as we were playing it that it, it does like <laughs> feel like it was like basically a screenplay like attempt like it, it has to the point where arches opens with like a cold open that yeah that sets things up and like this but like a very I, I can see the scene in the movie kind of cold open. <laughs> yeah, very much. Which affects its pacing a lot, which is interesting, because that, that made it unlike a lot of uh, visual novels that kind of take their time. Yeah. I like that it uses... Well, Ca Captain for game, Nico... For again, it's using a bunch of, like, uh, filtered photos. I like the yep. heavy color grading and, like, sort of stylization of them, so it's not just yeah. photos. Yeah. They feel very intense. It allows them to draw in elements because I like I don't think that this house is a real part of this picture. I think everything else is real and the house was was drawn in. Uh, it could be. I don't know. I think slightly the, different. I feel like this would always look out of place in real life. Definitely. Uh, but, but yeah, you, but yeah, you can definitely say, like you can definitely like edit a bunch of photos together and then filter them together to make yes. it look cohesive. So, I mean, knowing Captain Nico, though, Captain Nico primarily draws comics, from what I understand. I mean, that's how I know of of them, uh, you know. And He's been around they, forever. They, they do a lot of period piece stuff, uh, and so it's all very in line with the work that they've done um, in in more like adult venues. But uh, this is like. It's interesting. It feels like a far more literary project. And I'm not saying that just because there's like actual word. It's like literally a written novel, but because like the way that it's paced, the way that it's constructing its characters, the way it's introducing things, it just has a it's not written like the comics that uh, Captain Nico has written. It has a very different voice. I like that about it. I think it's very interesting. You can tell it's by the same person, but it's a very different style. God, how long has this person been around? I feel like they might. I feel like they might have drawn like a SWAT Cats comic I read like a decade ago. Oh yeah, I think so. That sounds like something that would be correct. They've been around for a long time. I'm, tr I'm trying to look it up to see if I just see like a wildly just get fucking face blasted by <laughs> a wildly old art style that they've evolved from completely, and just be startled by that. It's like when you see like the ancient black and white Mish comics, you're like, whoa, <laughs> forgot about this. <laughs> but anyway, if you want to check out the rest of the game, you can. there's a link in the description, uh, 18 plus, but it does have an NSFW toggle, but I don't I don't think that makes it not 18 plus. I just think it means you don't have NSFW visuals. It's still an adult story, I'm sure. So link in the doobly do. Remember yeah, that? We'll Remember when we'll people would say that? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we'll see if when it's uh when it's finished we we, c we come back through it because my interest is certainly peaked. Yeah, I want to I want to see it, but it's like the usual thing where we just both of us only like to play finished visual novels, so that's yeah. what we're doing. Let's try. See you guys next time.